over the last decade or so, there's been a growth in research that relates the potential relationship between the microbes in our gut and how the brain works. And at this point, it's fair to say that uh, it's quite clear that the local environment of the gut affects uh, the immune system, which we, we've known for a long time has effects on the brain. Uh, there's also probably a direct connection in terms of the vagus nerve and the way it actually interacts with the gut, affects the gut, and also brings back information to the nervous system. So the, the connection, whether it's the immune system and other factors that are released into the bloodstream that make their way to the brain, or these direct neural connections, there's now, there's now absolutely no doubt whatsoever that there are some um, major, major interactions between the gut and the brain. So as just one example, we, we know there are investigators who have been doing this kind of work. It's not me, I'm, I'm just someone who helped um, put together a session here at the American Epilepsy Society. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's known, for example, that uh, the gut uh, influences the production of neurotrophic factors in the brain and it also uh, changes the release of various kinds of cytokines that circulate in the brain uh, circulate in the blood and make their way into the brain and confect the uh, the function of the brain itself so that's just beginning and which is one of the reasons why it was ex again exciting to bring this uh, body of work um, to the uh, uh, the epilepsy meetings uh, because if uh, in fact one of the speakers at the session uh, Andre Maserati from UCLA uh, recently published a, a commentary on the, uh, the potential influence of the gut on epilepsy the microbiome on epilepsy and he showed a graph of the publications that have been done in the field of all of microbiome versus the brain versus uh, autism versus epilepsy and it's quite extraordinary to know how much work has been done in the microbiome and how very very little has been done in epilepsy per se so even autism for example uh, if you look on PubMed today in 2019 you'll find well over 400 articles that uh, connect that, that uh, uh, investigate the connection between the microbiome and autism but if you look in epilepsy it's still well less than 25 or so so um, this is just the beginning so how much it's going to translate into epilepsy is is unknown because it's not kind of like this vast unexplored universe for us well I, I think it's fair to say that one of the big catalysts for the excitement in the field was a very important paper that Elaine Chow also from UCLA published in the journal Cell in, I believe it was in June of 2018. And what Elaine, uh, who, who's a microbiome person, she's not an epilepsy person, but she asked a series of really interesting questions, beginning with, how does a ketogenic diet work since it's an exposure to a diet that interacts with our microbiome and then has been shown to be effective in the treatment of at least a subset of patients with epilepsy? And without going into all the detail, <laughs> what she was eventually able to learn was that the ketogenic diet requires the existence of the microbiome in order to work. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, maybe not too surprising that you need to have the right microbes in there to, to um, metabolize you know, the, the, the food that you're taking in. But uh, truly, potentially groundbreaking was that she discovered that, in fact, elements of the microbiome itself are capable of reproducing the, the effect of the ketogenic diet without having the diet itself. And she went a step further and she was able to identify two specific bacteria of the you know, gazillions that exist in our microbiome that those two alone were sufficient for producing the effects of the ketogenic diet. And then she took it one, yet one step further and came up with some potential mechanisms of the interaction between those bacteria and ultimately the GABA or the neuro, uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter that is uh, so important for uh, brain function. She was able to show that uh, one potential mechanism of action was the influence of these bacteria in the gut on the ultimate production of GABA in the brain. So, you know, the, the, when I first saw that paper, it, it, it just really opened my eyes to what I, th what I think many of us now believe to be, again, an extraordinarily interesting area that has essentially remained unexplored in the field of epilepsy until recently.